know that I'm on the front line, I'm in the trenches, fighting for you. Fighting for equality, fighting for equity, and fighting for justice. I am the founder of Mario Woods Coalition. I am the founder of Justice for Mario Woods. And again, I am the founder of Wealth and Disparities in the Black Community. And the reason we are here tonight is one, we have a new DA in town. Her name is DA Brooke Jenkins.
someone is ready to transform their life and change their lives, and if you have good information, I can't save anyone, as I tell my brothers. I can't save anyone. But what I can do is bring you good information, and you decide to change yourself. And that's what discovering your true self is. Discovering your true self for life. Raise your hands up there. Take a bow. Discovering your true self. I got them working today. They working today. I love, I love my brothers. They come a long way and I'm so proud of them. And so I want to bring up the host committee. First and foremost, my mentor, Dr. Mary Ann Jones. Where is she? Dr. Jones? Come on up. I love her. Lynn Westry, come on up. Ms. Gwendolyn Westbrook, come on up. Maurice Rivers is absent. Is Sean, Sean here? Is Sean here? He's running a little late, okay. Sean, Maurice. And so, these are my host committees. I'm always doing something, but I need help, y'all. I can't continue to do this by myself. I want to uh, give a shout out to Renard Monroe if you missed his comedy, um, Explosion, August 13th, and his um, ability to give people awards for doing work in the community. I just want to acknowledge you. Stand up, Renard, for your good work in the community. And thank you. They say, oh, my.
that's how I roll. So um, I'm going to give a chance uh, for my co-host to say something. Do you, would you like to say something? Lynn doesn't ever want to say anything. Just smile. Uh, when you want to say something?
professionals with her this evening. Thank you very much. All right, all right. Thank you. So we'll bring up Jason, Jason Young, and he's going to introduce the DA, and then DA Jenkins, if you want to come up and say a few words. Then we're going to do the um, community where you go from table to table and meet the community, and the community will ask you whatever they want to ask. And whatever your concerns are, this is your opportunity. So the next time I see, uh, hear somebody on Facebook, y'all can tell the truth and shame the devil. All right, Jason. All right, thank you. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. First off, um, before I do this introduction, there's a lot of people in here. Uh, we'll be on the front line. San Francisco, I just want to give a, a second to acknowledge everybody. Uh, even if I don't say your name, I see you. Uh, Javon, Lynn Westry, uh, Uncle Dan, Nora, uh, Kevin Epps, you know what I mean? Um, the see how I put this. Uh, accountability. I've been big on accountability. My whole life, and especially for the last two years. A lot of people may know me, some people may know my story, some people may not. My son lost his life on the 4th of July playing with fireworks, right here in Baby. Um, we had a district attorney in office at the time who I felt like didn't care about the community, ain't never really been in touch with the community, don't know the work to the community and how decisions are made in the district attorney's office can continue to perpetuate the cycle of violence in our communities when there is no accountability. When you charge juveniles as juveniles when innocent kids get shot in the street. And I've been fighting for the last two years. It's not about being no politician and me out here endorsing nobody, none of that. But the same way I've been on the front line with some of these people that I acknowledged when I started this speech. I've been on the front line with Brooke Jenkins, making sure that Chester Boudin was no longer our district attorney in San Francisco. And I had several conversations with her, you know, and then fought with her. And from what I've seen right now, until then, she is about accountability. If I call her on the phone, I don't got to talk to her assistant, I can call her. I talked to her last night at 11 p.m. Um, you know, so give her a chance, hear her out. You know, she's been where we've been, she's been impacted by violence just the same way we have. So with that, the new district attorney of San Francisco, good genius. Even though my son was a baby, uh, that pain was no less, let me tell you. Uh, 
Um, and so that's what started this, this, this journey of mine uh, down this road. And since the day I walked into the DA's office in 2014, I've tried to represent really uh, a, a fair person on both, for both sides of the world. Uh, what we know is that we've always been disadvantaged as black people in this system. Um, nobody has really understood what leads us into the criminal justice system. And so I wanted to not only represent victims, but also look at the, the people who were charged as people, right, as human beings, not as just case files. And that's the way that I've done this work, is to make sure that every step of the way, uh, everybody involved in this system was treated like a human being uh, who had gone through something. And sometimes for many of those people, that meant accountability, but it was fair and proportional accountability for what they had done. And so, uh, that is the way that I want my office to proceed, right? Now that I stand before you, having started as a volunteer in the misdemeanor unit, and now I could have never imagined I'd be the district attorney in San Francisco, I'm trying to create an office environment where the attorneys and the staff understand that everybody that's in this system is a person. Everybody has suffered from trauma of some sort, right? And that we need to be giving the best of ourselves to each and every person involved, right? When a parent calls, reaches out to our office, saying, it was my son or my daughter that was murdered. You're right, it shouldn't be that an assistant DA is who they are, is their stealing of who they talk to. It should be me, and it will be me. But at the same token, if it's somebody whose child is in orange, coming in facing charges, and they want the ear of the DA because they feel like I need to know something about the way their child's case is being handled. I'm just as open and available to them too. Because that's the only way we're gonna create fairness in this system. I'm not from San Francisco, I'm from across the bay. Uh, you guys know how that goes, right? You come into Frisco if you want to go out to a club. I used to come go to City Nights, all those things. Uh, <laughs> but uh, my husband's family is, is from San Francisco. I see his godmother and his god sister sitting right here in front of me. I see uh, our cousin back there, Antoine, who's a part of the uh, fire department here. He's serving the Bay View. Um, <laughs> Well, minus the Fillmore, I'm sorry. Oh. I've only identified Lakeview, Bayview, and, uh, and Sunnydale, but we'll, we'll find some distant family cousin from, from the Fillmore. But this, this city means a lot to our family. Uh, our own family member was murdered here in the Bayview in 2020, the day after Jace Young was murdered. Uh, so we know what that feels like. Uh, and we know also what it feels like to not be served by the DA's office. Um, and so just know that I wanna make sure this office does things the right way. Every time uh, there is something that we're going to advance that has an impact primarily on our communities, we will invite you to the table. I've had all week members of the community inside our office discussing uh, policies that we, will, that we are working on announcing uh, so that we can have input from the people who policies impact. And my commitment is that this isn't a one-time thing. You will see me after November. Hopefully not as much in heels, and hopefully <laughs> not because if there's a case, right, that you have to be involved in on either side, but just as a member of the community. Uh, because we're going to be far more present than we've ever been. If I'm going to be the second black district attorney in San Francisco, I have an obligation to our community to do this far better than it's ever been done. Right. And that's what I actually want to do. I just want to point out some people in the room before I start making my rounds. Uh, we have a new Chief of Victim Services uh, in our office. It's Ms. Monifa Willis, who is here. Let me tell you, she's going to change the way this work is being done. Uh, she's got over two decades of experience uh, serving 
people who not only have been victims of crime, but who have also been in the juvenile justice system and other things. And so um, she gets both sides of this. She's had her, she, she has her own personal story of, of having lost somebody close to her from, from gun violence or from violence. And so um, she gets it, and she's going to make sure that her division uh, provides the best service to our community uh, better than it's ever been done. And in support of that, and the people who are on the ground doing the work, we have several of them here tonight, which is Jovan Thomas, who I'm sure many of you know. Uh, <laughs> he is a victim advocate uh, in our office. We have all four of them back there are victim advocates. Uh, we have Ray, Kevin, and then Willie Gray over to my left. Uh, <laughs> so this isn't just about me, it's about making sure that my office right, has a presence in the community, and that's what we are committed to. Um, you heard Mr. Randy Ross, who's the new Director of Strategic Planning and Initiatives. He wears a lot of hats in the office, uh, but it's really instrumental in helping us make sure that we're doing this the right way. Um, and I just want to give a shout out to uh, our California member of the Board of Equalization, Maria Cohen, who is here. We also want to be our state controller, so make sure you vote. Uh, but I, I just wanted to make sure that you understood, and our, my director of communications is running around here somewhere. There he is. My new director of communications, Randy Casada. This is what I mean. It is 6.24 on a Thursday, and my staff is willing to be here because this is what it's about. So uh, just know we are committed, I am committed, uh, and now I'll start making my rounds before Ms. Jones starts yelling at <laughs>
person blessed. That's what we do. Continue to bless the people.